All right, I'm gonna go over the spring brake relay valve. So for Bendix, this will be a, let me see it right here. AR, no, it's not. Let's see if we can find some, some indication and nomenclature on here. Look on the lid. No. no, I'm not seeing it. So, this will be our our spring brake relay valve. Uh, if you're looking for a Bendix one, this will be your R14 valve. If I'm not mistaken, R yeah, R12 is the right. So the R14 valve. So the role of the R12, uh, R14 valve in the system is to provide relay operation from the your push pull from your push pull valves on your, your dash mounted push pull valve to the spring brake spring brake portion of your air brake can and to also provide the anti compounding function uh, for the air brake can between the service and spring brake portion of the air brake can. So basically how this valve works is that when once your system is charged with air, I'm gonna charge my system with air real fast. Purge valve go off here shortly. Okay. So once I operate my push pull valve to supply air to the brake cans, I get signal air from the pull push valve into the top of my R14 valve. And then through my R14 valve, I see that I have direct air straight from the both of my supply tanks. So, and, and of course this is gonna vary by vehicle because you may have one large supply tank, you may have two. So it's totally dependent on the vehicle, but you'll be receiving mixed air from both your supply tank tanks through a double check valve into, as you see right here, the lower portion of the of the valve, of the spring brake valve. Once we have portion on air, signal air is going to allow, is going to block off our exhaust and allow air to flow through the relay valve and then pneumatically cage our air brake cans. In this particular case, this one valve is controlling all four. So all four, or take a step back, or both of our, which would be both of our drive axles. We see that the air pressure is the same in our tanks and in our spring brake portion of the air brake can. So on all four axles. And that's it, right? Um, <clears throat> some ways that this may fail. So if you haven't been through the Bendix training, even though you see this board is set up like this, and remember this board is set up for educational purposes, normally we won't be wanting to put any Teflon tape. And I say like this is gonna be totally shop dependent. Some shops are still gonna do it, but normally we don't wanna add Teflon tape when we're uh, putting our fittings back in, that is a normal way that this valve is going to fail because it's going to get some Teflon tape over time put into it. We can go back here and look at one of our older uh, air boards and we see even though this thing has not been on the elements at all throughout its life, the Teflon tape is still deteriorating. So that's a normal uh, place of debris 
intrusion is actually the Teflon tape going into the valves and causing the valve to malfunction. And then just some normal wear and tear on the valve. Um, normally you may see it either as uh, if you have some debris as the exhaust port being stuck open and air continuously exhausting out of the valve. That's not to say that that is the only way that the valve can fail, but that is just a way that the valve normally, the valve normally fails or it can fail. Uh, that's about it for this video. The next one. I'll try to cover the ATR6 valve. Have any questions or comments? Leave them below. Thank you. Have a nice day.